Please I suppose I should do that in English. Anyone in the in the sound of my voice that wishes to come to uh, receive the Blessed Sacrament, Holy Communion, just be here from 1230 to 1. The doors will be open. Uh, that much we can do, and the church is available for prayer. Light a candle and approach the Blessed uh, Sacrament. Saturday school, Sunday school has started outside, Patsotia, in the, in the tents. So as long as the weather holds out, we'll have Saturday school and Sunday school. Hopefully by the time the weather gets questionable, maybe we'll have permission from passing the Department of Public Health to uh, use the insides of, of our complex. Um, so we have a directive from the Western Diocese from Bishop Hovnan. We are collecting, St. Gregory is collecting uh, the following supplies which will be sent to Hayastan. So if you make a trip to Walmart, Target, Costco, what, uh, and you wish to support, we will happily receive it. Just bring your supplies here Tuesday through Saturday, 9 to 4.30, and we will accept it. We will, we will take the responsibility of taking over to the diocese, to the Glen Oaks property. Medical supplies, would I mean, Sabi Terer, bandages. I saw men gun tuning. Yev gurnak perel mekras nyagin an shush yelek shapti oren mitchev shapator jamein inen mitchev chors han seges. Cernotzer yev adesag abrankner udelik chors sads esenk lupia volorn cans of tuna duper inspes sugeru tuna. Uh, chicken filet, alang pana, tea of surge, uh, inchpes naev blankets, uh, pajgoner, goshikner, shab ungerner, yev island atamena, yev medzerun hamar, yev uh, bastik sink ashaget gam uh, zavak neru, manug neru, uh, darikin hamar gan tunink. I suppose I should repeat this in English. We received, uh, as I mentioned, permission from the diocese to collect supplies and and we will send it to highest on medical supplies painkillers of any kind that you have if you work in a pharmacy if you were an md works in a hospital of course uh you can get your hands on the stronger stuff but even stuff from target walmart wherever costco painkillers of any kind cold and flu medication gauze pads cots and bandages sanitary supplies wipes Gloves, hydrogen peroxide, food, dried goods like bags of beans, peas, uh, cans of tuna especially. Don't have to get the Costco size. If you get the smaller ones, which two or three can keep a family for you know a whole meal or so, that can be distributed. Canned chicken filet, they have that unveiled. Tea and coffee. Entertainment for keep the children occupied at least. Cards, children coloring books, crayons, puzzles. Clothing, sleeping bags for children and adults, blankets, jackets, boots, underwear. Bring them, we will take the responsibility of uh, taking it to the Western Diocese, please, Tuesday through Saturday between 9 and 4.30, and we'll take care of it. Nor zrakirma vor vahe sargavaka devasken movsesyanin het gashkadi het anor het miasin arashrotaranin sub kikodus alichigetsvo I said, yeah, Guka, Mank, Gagazma Gerbank, Balloon Launch. Puchik, I think, and Koha Panutian order, no imper Kasana Hink, Ardujamadas the Megin, Host Mer Pagin, Mercher, Hazar Puchig, Hazar Puchig, Megan Kamen, Biditse Kank, Amen Mega Telov, Kapad, Zivdaga, Kervaz, Turtin Vra, Zoherun, Atahi Zoherun, Anunma. Uremen, Gernak, Navida Rutunda, Hada Das Dolare, Yeresun Dolar, Yerek Purchig, Yerakuin, Asush Kapuid, Garmin Nan Shakuin, 
եւ այդ ցեր նավերադովությունները բիդերթա արցախ and i will mention that it will be matched dollar for dollar so 10 dollars turns into 20 dollars let me repeat this in english on november 25th thanksgiving day at 11 a.m. in our courtyard in our parking lot we will release 1000 balloons in the tricolor red orange and blue if you would like to support this it is a fundraiser for artsakh 10 dollars balloon but 30 dollars gets you three balloons together in the in the yara coin and 100% of that donation because the expenses are being covered 100% of that donation will be matched dollar for dollar so your 10 dollars turns into 20 your 30 dollars turns into 60 our goal to raise $20,000 on Thanksgiving Day. So please be a part of it. You may call the office for details. We'll send out some information. This was just handed to me that it's been finalized and approved by Sir Pazan. Well, it was another difficult week for all of us, given the heavy news out of Artsakh. Since September 27th, our hearts have been filled with heaviness over the loss now of 1,100 and more soldiers and civilians and we are all we of all people get it that turkey would love to destroy every armenian in the region this is nothing new what astounds us is how on earth in this day and age they could convince israel to aid in the process once again we ask why is it that israel of all nations cannot help defend those who cannot defend themselves instead they play a significant role in the bloody offense of those who cannot defend themselves the question remains if Israel cannot, can't defend Armenia, is it too much to ask if they could just at least not give military support for the destruction of Armenia? Israel of all nations knows the pain of not being defended when they could not defend themselves. It seems there's truth in the adage that a prerequisite for politics is selling your soul to the devil. Anhor Evot Foyvok, we support in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. One of the great challenges for a priest each week is presenting a meaningful and hopefully inspirational message. So in searching for a topic, I usually start with the scriptural passage of the day or of the weekend. And from there, I look at the church calendar to see what saint or historical event is being commemorated that particular week. But today is different. In the 22 years as a priest, the preparation of today's sermon has been by far the most difficult. My heart is preoccupied with Artsakh as it is with all of you. Yet the day after tomorrow, we in America, were faced with another presidential election. I think I can speak on behalf of the entire country. We cannot wait until the end of this election cycle. It's been long, it's been a long time coming, and we're tired. But this will be the sixth presidential election since my ordination to the priesthood. And I assure you, in the previous five elections, no one has ever approached me asking, Der Sarkis, tell me for whom I should vote. Never, not once, until this year. Email, text, telephone, in person, dead eye, dead eye, who do I vote for? Oh my God. I assure you, I've never told anyone they should vote for this, that, or the other candidate. I haven't, and I won't. But I can give direction to help a person use their own conscience to guide them so they can make their own decision. I mean, that goes for the propositions, that goes for the initiatives, uh, help me, Congress, whatever it's got on the ballot, but everyone's mind, of course, is on the presidency. Well, there are many issues to evaluate, all of them important. Health insurance, pandemic, the economy, and the list goes on. Each issue more important than the next. Uh, but of course, as ethnic Armenians, we naturally look for a candidate who makes a credible claim that he would support Armenia. That speaks to us, that speaks to me too, as Armenians, as lovers of justice. But election cycle after election cycle, we've heard it all before and we're still waiting for politicians on the highest level to not just say the right thing, but to do the right thing from both parties, by the way. So it's a complex world and there are many issues which gnaw at our conscience. This weekend, according to the church calendar, we commemorate the fourth century St. John Chrysostom, golden mouth, in Greek, Chrysostom, golden mouth, Voskeperan, we say it in Armenian, major church father. 
noted for his sermons and writings, hence the name Bosque Peran. He was the golden mouth. What he, people would listen to his sermons by the hundreds, by the thousands, and his writings less to this day. In fact, his prayers more than any other are included in our divine liturgy, the Zadzuk prayers, the private prayers of the celebrant. Our church fathers made sure that what he had to pray for is remembered and we pray for it, the celebrant of our divine liturgy. Anyway, he wrote a manual for priests called Six Books on the Priesthood, and it's a must-read for all seminarians at St. Nurses Armenia Theological Seminary. So when I took the time this week, because I was having such difficulty coming up with the topic, this week I reread the writings of St. John Chrysostom in the hope that it would remind me of both my priestly responsibilities as well as our Christian duties, because it's applicable to clergy and lay people, right? And from the 160-page book, three quotes stood out, and I kind of wrote them down. And each one of those quotes, believe it or not, have meaning two days before the presidential election, despite the fact they were written 1,700 years ago. It's a question of principles in the end. So let me read them, and I, and I think you'll understand why St. John re remains a valuable church father in the Orthodox Church, and why his writings are relevant even today. One, this is the first one. Christians damage Christ's cause more than his enemies and foes. Could I repeat it? Christians damage Christ's cause more than his enemies and foes. But think about it. We expect the enemies of Christ to publicly ridicule his message. Why wouldn't they? They're opposed to him. They're opposed to Christ. But when a follower of a Christ speaks ill of the message of Christ... It speaks volumes. It gives the message that being a follower of Jesus has only so much value. It gives the message that some teachings of Jesus are acceptable, other teachings of Jesus are not acceptable. And we, his followers, have the right to make that determination. Our human judgment supersedes Christ's divine judgment. Dear Sarkis, what does that have to do with this election? Well, a lot, a whole lot. If we're Christian, we're Christian every single day, including election day. I'll say it again. I've never, ever told anyone how to vote, and I won't now. I will, however, help people use their own conscience to guide them how to vote. If our gripe as Armenians is that other nations have not come forward to defend a defenseless people, either in 1915 or in 2020, then how can we cast a vote for a candidate or a party which embraces that very policy? On the national scene, there's a party which embraces the idea of a mother having the right to end the life of her defenseless child on demand, even in the ninth month. A party that's entertaining the idea whereby even if an abortion attempt is not successful and the child is born alive, the physician at the mother's request would not be bound to administer aid to that child. He could, in fact, simply stand back and watch as he allows that defenseless child to die before him. How on earth could we, as baptized Christians, allow our conscience to beg God the Father to send help for defenseless Armenia. At the same time, embrace a policy which allows abortion on the demand of a defenseless full-term baby. Two, again from Chrysostom. A man who has received an honor should not use its greatness as a cloak for his faith. I'm going to repeat it. A man who has received an honor should not use its greatness as a cloak for his faults. We like to assume that every person, be he political candidate, be he clergyman, be he layperson, every one of us should be forthright in the image he presents of himself. Now Chrysostom said the above quote regarding clergymen, but it's applicable to all. I'm going to repeat it. A man who has received an honor should not use its greatness as a cloak for his faults. Year after year, Vice President Biden, on Ash Wednesday, 
presented himself as a faithful Catholic who went to Mass, and then appeared at a press conference or public event in front of the press with ash on his forehead in the sign of the cross, as if to say, look at me, I'm Catholic. Yet he now leads a party which embraces the policy of late-term abortion. Again, I ask, how can we raise our prayer to God Almighty, asking for nations to help defend Armenia who cannot defend itself? if we think nothing of supporting a policy which allows a mother up to the ninth month to demand abortion on a child that cannot defend himself or herself, in essence, ignoring the defenseless who need defending. Three, Chrysostom. The priest's soul must be purer than the rays of the sun in order that the Holy Spirit may never leave him desolate, and he may be able to say, I live, yet no longer I, but Christ who lives in me. I'm going to repeat it. The priest's soul must be purer than the rays of the sun, in order that the Holy Spirit may never leave him desolate. And he may, able, he may be able to say, I live, yet no longer I, but Christ who lives in me. Father well, Sarkis, I'm not a priest. Chrysostom doesn't mean a thing to me. It doesn't apply to me. Want to bet? The only difference between a priest and a layman is what? The priest conducts sacraments. Everything else is the same. We're all charged with conducting the commandments of Christ. If we dare say we're proud to be Armenian, then we can't avoid the call for the world to defend a nation that needs defending from an unjust and bloodthirsty hostile nation. If we dare say we're Christian, we can't be indifferent to an unjust policy which allows the mutilation and death of an unborn child up to the ninth month who cannot defend him or herself. On a personal level, this week, my family commemorates the passing of my father. He died 22 years ago. And the only reason I mention it here because uh, he was an OBGYN. He delivered the probably countless thousands of babies over 40 years. One day years ago, I was in his office on a Saturday morning. He was opening his mail. And in that 15 minutes, among the stuff he was opening, he opened three letters written by couples from across the country who never heard of them. They looked them up in those days, the yellow pages, all asking the same thing. Dr. Patoyan, we're unable to have children. Please tell any of your patients that if they don't wish to keep their baby, we're willing to pay for all the medical bills if they just find us worthy to raise their child. We're desperate to adopt. I remember my dad's response. He, he looked at me and said, you see these? You see these? I get letters like this every week. Then he collected those letters, opened the top drawer of his file cabinet, and threw them in there with the hundreds of other letters he had. Those couples were willing to defend any defenseless child, but the policy being supported by a platform on the ballot the day after tomorrow stands in opposition to that which is the will of God. In the last two days, the press in Southern California has mentioned the death of Sean Connery a thousand times over, especially it's a local thing, it's a Hollywood thing. I don't think in Fresno or the Bay Area it got this much press, but yet we hardly heard a peep about the unjust attack on Hayastan, on Artsakh, and the scores of deaths each day. Yet during that same time frame, at a press conference in Azerbaijan, you had to look for it, it didn't appear in the American press, the PR person for the soccer team, the Azerbaijan soccer team, Nurhan Ibrahimov, a name that should live in infamy, stood up and said publicly the following, we Azerbaijanis must kill all Armenians, children, women, elderly. We need to kill them without distinction. No regrets, no compassion. And if we don't kill them, they will kill us and our children. Oh, really? The media may think the death of a 90-year-old actor is more important than the threat to the existence of an ancient people. We don't. There may be issues on the line this election day, each one more important than the other. Understandably, we're passionate about them. Understandably, some will disagree. Most of us do with one another. Doesn't mean we can't respect one another. But the one issue which stands out for me, both as an ethnic Armenian 
as well as an Orthodox Christian, is defined by the dialogue between Jesus and Peter. John 21. A second time Jesus said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter answered him, yes, Lord, you know we love you. Jesus said to him, then tend my sheep. Tend my sheep. This is the call. This is the duty. This is the charge to the followers of Christ. If we love him, we cannot turn our back on this commitment, on this commandment. Be it for our brothers and sisters in Artsakh. Be it for our brothers and sisters in Hayastan. Be it for our yet-to-be-born brothers and sisters in America. In a world that turns a blind eye toward right versus wrong, in a world that has a, not a clear definition between right and wrong, I ask that we remember all of this in the name of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen.